Hi, my name's Mike Barnard, and I'm one of the pre-sales managers here at MyQ Solution. Well, hopefully you're watching this video today because you want to find out more about MyQ Smart. So what we're going to do, first of all, is take you to our website, www.myq-solution.com. Find out a lot of information about the MyQ range of products on here. But what we're looking for is one of those links that says free download. When you click on that link, it will take you to our new landing page smart.myq-solution.com as the name suggests this gives you much more information about smart always worthwhile having a quick look through here find out some information about the product find out what it can do but quite importantly we've got a myq community portal and there is an option on here to register and then to sign in i do strongly recommend that you do this because what it will do is it will give you access to all the resources the extra clients and any information you might need about MyQ Smart. So once you've got yourself registered and all signed in, I want you to then scroll back up the page and find that free download link. Click on the link, and what you'll see is MyQ Smart will download in the background. As well as the software installer, what you'll also get is a couple of PDF files. There's an information leaflet all about MyQ Smart, as well as a quick setup guide. So once the software is installed, it will be in a zipped archive. You need to extract that archive, as you can see us doing here. When we look in there, what we'll do is we'll see these three files. And there you go. So once you've got your three files, what we're going to do now is we're going to install that MyQ version 8. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click on that and we're going to run it as the administrator. This is actually a Windows 10 desktop computer, but the install process is literally the same for a server infrastructure. So we're going to start off, we're going to click on in yes to let it run. We're going to select our language and then we're going to get our license agreement. Obviously we should always scroll through this. As long as we agree with the terms of the license, we click on the accept and then our installation will commence. As you can see there, our default location has been shown. We can change it at this point or we can just leave it as is. The installation will run in the background and once it's completed, MyQ will launch up its Easy Config option. Now we'll take you through the Easy Config option shortly, but that is a nice little application which allows us to control the MyQ system, start and stop the services, and change the user credentials, for example. As you can see, we've got a little pop-up come up on the screen to let us know that some changes needed to the Windows firewall. Once done that, we just click Allow or Access on that. Our install is completed. And the next thing we'll see is our easy config tool. And there it is just loading up in the background. Okay, as I said within here, you can see there our default username, which is star admin. You can change the password. There is also that link to quickly load up the login to our admin console. As I said, star admin, and the default password is 1234. Do strongly recommend that you do change that for security reasons. Whilst we're here, this is our main admin overview. As you can see, you've got quick access to quite a few of the different features within MyQ. You can actually customize this with a little link up on the right that says add new gadget, or of course, you've also got access to our health monitor. The quick setup guide is there in front of us. And as you can see there, time zone was done. So the first thing we're going to do is go in and enter our company information. This is also where we have the link to re request our smart license. We click on that, fill in a couple more details, and then obviously we hit the OK button to submit our request. What will happen is the MyQ servers will send you a license code directly to your email address that you registered in your company details. So keep an eye on that and look out for that email to come in. Once you get that email, you'll see your activation code is in there. You need to copy that activation code, go back into your MyQ interface, go back then into your licensing screen, paste the license in, and then click on the next button. Okay, as you can see now, the license has been applied, and all you need to do is click on the activate all button, 
So click on that and the activation of your license is done. Okay, first bit's over and done with. Next bit is the administrator email address. Always worthwhile putting this in here so that you can be notified should there be any issues with the MyQ system. Could let you know when your license is expiring or if there's an issue with your backup, for example. So just fill that in. Okay, you can see there our time zone is already completed and we've got our default language. We can also enter our currency code for the UK, that's GBP. Another bit of information here, we can enter the number of places after the decimal point. So for our pounds in pence example. Once we're done, click on save. Back to our home menu, you can see that's now got a green tick. So we're going to move on to our outgoing SMTP server. This is what allows MyQ to send out the emails. So we're going to fill some details in here. As you can see, I've masked these out for the video for security reasons. But once you've done that, put in a test email, click on the OK button, and you should hopefully get a successful result. Another tick in the box. The very next thing we do is the printers. Now, the way that MyQ adds printers is we run something called a printer discovery. So this will go out and look at a range of IP addresses on our network and discover the printers that are there to allow us to add them to MyQ. So as you can see, I've got my range set up here on the right hand side. I'm going to give that a name, so I'm going to call it Demo Network. And I can then go in here and have a quick look at it and I can decide some further actions. I want to activate the printers and I'm also going to ask it to correct, create even a direct queue. So there we go, all my settings are done. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to run that discovery. So I click on run and my queue is now off looking across my network and as it finds the devices we can see them add them to the list. Once they've all been added I've got a quick link there to add them all to my queue. So I click on that and my queue will take them all and this is all signified by a green plus sign. As you can remember I asked my queue to create some direct queues for me. So if I go into my MyQ queues menu, what I will see now is I've got a direct queue created for each one of those printers that's been installed. So the final bit left to, left to be done is to add some users. So what I'm going to do in the first instance is to import some users from a CSV source. Now I've already prepared a CSV file and I've got that stored on a USB stick. So I'm just going to select that now there we go and I'm going to select the encoding get the encoding all set correctly and then I've got a couple more options that I can put in do I want to deactivate missing users and various other different settings here click all those buttons then click on the save option and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run that synchronization so I click on synchronize now and there you go. As you can see, I've got some results. It's been successful and I've got some users added to my MyQ system. Just click on the MyQ menu, go into users, and there they are all listed. So that essentially completes the first part of, or the main of the MyQ installation. What I'm now going to take you through is how to add users using Windows Active Directory. So with an LDAP lookup. Obviously, this is an alternative to the CSV way. So once again, go into my sync source, and this time I'm going to say add an LDAP source. I need to create an LDAP server. So first of all, it's going to ask me for my domain. I put the domain name in. I then select any security as well as the type. And obviously this is going to be an active directory. Once that's done, I can do a test to make sure I've got a connection. And as you can see, that's been successful. So I save it. There is a built-in LDAP browser in MyQ, which allows us to go in and browse our Active Directory structure. And what I'm going to look for is my base DN. Now to save time, what I'm going to do is literally paste the DN in, but you can actually browse and find this from your tree structure. Some of the fields you can see under properties there will be automatically populated, and these will be used and assigned to our users in the MyQ system. 
So once I'm happy and I'm ready, I can click on save and I'm going to run that synchronization. As you can see, I've deselected the CSV one and I'm now synchronizing LDAP. And once again, I get a success message. If I then look back into my user menu, what I will see is I've got some extra users and these users identified that their source is coming from the domain. The final option we have is to add some groups from our Active Directory into MyQ. So once again, go back into my synchronization screen. We've got various ways of adding groups and the way that I'm going to do it is I'm actually going to look at the full attributes of a user and I'm going to strip from the left and strip from the right. I'm taking one from the left and two from the right. I'm going to save those changes and then I'm going to go back in and run my synchronization once more. So there you go, I hit synchronize now. And as you can see now, it's already decided to add some more groups. So if I go into my MyQ users menu, as well as my users, I've also got my groups. Some of these are in subgroups. As I can see, I've got three under there, and I've also got my main demo group.